Let's return to our top story, the resignation of the British Prime Minister Boris Johnson, who has announced he's stepping down. Our rights correspondent John Cookson is back with us on Newsday. So, John, Johnson bowing to the inevitable, but what did you make of his timetable of departure? Hi, guys. Good to see you. Great to be on uh, Newsday. Well, look, I, I, I've seen Prime Ministers resign in the past in Downing Street, and uh, Theresa May went out in tears. So did Margaret Thatcher. But I thought Boris Johnson today was uh, unemotional. Uh, he was uh, defiant, very much uh, Boris uh, on, on, on the front foot, I thought. And uh, he, he gave a very matter-of-fact uh, resignation speech. Uh, the thing, the line that stood out for me was that he said he was uh, sad to be stepping down from the best job in the world. He said the Conservative Party had uh, amazing uh, policies to push through uh, for the British people and the, the country had a, a golden future. Uh, he also pledged <coughs> excuse me, her support for Ukraine and that will continue, he said, for as long as it takes. But uh, generally speaking, uh, I, I, I thought it was, as I say, a fairly unemotional speech, uh, uh, very much uh, Boris. Uh, uh, kind of defiant, really. Uh, what you didn't see uh, to the right of the cameras was uh, uh, staff from Downing Street and also from Chequers and also wife Carrie, uh, Johnson's wife Carrie. She had the baby Ronnie with her uh, and they were, some were in tears, some were clapping. At the other end of Downing Street you have protesters, uh, uh, pro-European protesters, uh, 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 who re renamed the uh, Bay City Roller song Bye Bye Boris bye-bye. Uh, so you had these two elements, both the ends of, the, of Downing Street, with Boris giving his uh, departure speech. So uh, he's been busy already this morning, apart from, <laughs> apart from resigning, he's been, uh, been appointing uh, a, a new cabinet. So we have at least a new education secretary, a new Northern Ireland secretary, a new Welsh secretary, uh, uh, who will continue uh, uh, to work. And uh, basically, with all the resignations that have happened in the last a uh, few days. Uh, I mean, the, 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 the government has been barely functioning, so it's, it's very important now uh, for some of these cabinet posts to be uh, uh, filled and also the junior cabinet posts, uh, junior minister posts uh, uh, that also uh, had people quitting in the last couple of days. So uh, there's a sense of calmness, I think, here in Downing Street right now. Uh, you know, the, the boil has been lanced, as it were. I think things will settle down uh, now. Uh, we have the, the, the summer coming up when there'll be a, a, a campaign by various people uh, to uh, take over from uh, Boris Johnson as, as Prime Minister and uh, that uh, will get underway, I'm sure, in the next few days. Certainly a defiant Boris Johnson going out guns blazing, but um, what about those growing number of MPs who wanted him gone uh, right now and not in a couple of weeks? Yeah, there is that, uh, and that issue bubbling away in, in the background. There are some MPs, some from his own party, of course, who would like him to step down as Prime Minister now. Personally, I, I don't think that's going to happen, although uh, the leader of the opposition said that uh, he, he, he said this morning that he might uh, try to force a, a vote of no confidence in, in the Houses of Parliament. Uh, in the Commons uh, to get rid of Johnson to, to, to go now. I'm not sure that that's, that's a, a runner at the moment, although it has to be said uh, that Boris Johnson probably has only about 60 of his own, M own MPs, of his 360 MPs uh, on side. So uh, if uh, Labour wanted to press on with that, there is the possibility of uh, Johnson being uh, forced to step down as Prime Minister. However, uh, the situation there is uh, still quite fluid and quite dynamic and uh, we'll have to see how things develop during the course of the day. Uh, Labour says Johnson cannot stay on as Prime Minister or they will try to bring a no-confidence vote in Parliament. How likely is that? Yeah. Well, as, as I just said, I mean, it, it is a possibility. Uh, Parliament uh, breaks up for the recess, the summer recess, uh, very shortly. Uh, whether that's uh, uh, going to happen, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. As I say, uh, there's a possibility that uh, if, if uh, Labour pursued that policy, uh, then Johnson could, could well be out as Prime Minister. But uh, it, it, it's, frankly, it's, it's early days at the moment.
And finally, what ultimately did it for Johnson after so many scandals? Uh, I, the, uh, I didn't quite pick up what you said there. There's a bit of infer interference on the line. Uh, I think you mentioned uh, something about scandals. I, I, I think, as I, as I said earlier, I think things are going to quieten down a little bit uh, 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 in the coming weeks and months. Uh, uh, there was a lot of pressure for uh, Johnson to resign, and of course uh, uh, that has been playing out uh, in the last uh, three days or so since uh, the Chancellor and the Health Secretary uh, quit. Uh, I think what we will see in, in the next uh, few days is uh, people coming out of the woodwork, as it were, to uh, go for Johnson's job. Uh, I can run through some of the names of the people uh, who would uh, have got their campaign people uh, at the ready to start uh, uh, lobbying uh, for uh, the, the, their, their candidate to become Prime Minister. That includes Richie Sunak, the uh, former Chancellor. Uh, Sajid Javid, the former Health Secretary, Liz Truss, the Foreign Secretary, uh, Nadim Zahawi, the, the new Chancellor, and uh, outsiders like uh, Tom Tugendhat, who hasn't held a ministerial position, uh, and Penny Mordaunt, uh, who is uh, popular amongst the rank and file of the Tory party. I think, what's, I think people in the Tory party, they have to get over today, uh, uh, soak up what's happened, the Prime Minister's quit, uh, uh, and, you know, tomorrow is another day. I'm, I'm sure uh, things will develop during the course of the day, but uh, I think things will tend to, politically tend to calm down a little bit now. Well, after all that's gone on and seeing his rap sheet, what is going to be Boris Johnson's legacy politically? Is he, um, do you see more of a political future for him or is he done for? <clears throat> That's a, good, that's a good question, whether Boris Johnson will be remembered by historians as being one of the great prime ministers. And here I'm thinking of Blair, uh, Macmillan, Wilson perhaps, Thatcher of course. Uh, is Johnson up, up there with, with those people? I think uh, uh, history will have to judge that. Uh, what the British people will say, those who support Johnson as he got Brexit done, he had a good Covid campaign. Uh, the, the war in Ukraine, he, he's, he's led Europe on, on that and Britain still has a big role to play in that war. So it's a mixed verdict. I think it's just too early to say how he'll be remembered uh, uh, and whether he will be judged as one of the great British Prime Ministers. It's not over yet, of course. He's only a young man. He's 58 years old. Who knows? <laughs> he might try and come back again at some point. All right, senior correspondent John Cookson, thank you so much for the update and thank you for joining us on Newsday.